Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So we're at the end of the challenges for WebGoat, which is a web application penetration testing series that we have began with you. And of course, on the challenges, we have number challenges. And I want to take this chance to go through what happens when you are going through a use case of bug bounty or finding vulnerabilities manually with a web application system or server. And of course, we are on the second challenge, which is, of course, over here, it says, can you log in as Larry? So as part of this challenge, all right, in a real world scenario, you would have no hints. There will be no hints for you to take or advise where it will point to you specifically in a direction that asks you to try to break into the system. All right. So in this case, one wonderful workflow that you can actually try to follow is based directly on a hint that has been provided to you through this whole course. And that is on the left side, injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure, XML external entities, broken access control, cross-site scripting, insecure deserialization, vulnerable components, request forgeries, as well as client side attacks. Okay, so what do I mean exactly? Is that as you're doing all this bug bounty, web application penetration testing, you can actually try to go through each and every of this open web application security project top 10. And as you try it, you realize that it becomes a workflow for you. And of course, in this case, we have a login page, all right? And which is going to be the most applicable for a login page? Chances are you will start off with injection, all right? And if you're looking for other input places, you could be looking at cross-site scripting. All right, so you start off as that, and then you look into other places, other parts of the website where you could possibly try to run some of these vulnerabilities checks and find out whether there are any input forms, any parts of the server that could be exposing data. So very quickly, we'll be able to find out all these details. All right. So without further ado, let us go ahead with the tutorial. So in this case, right, we are straight into the login page, right, for this particular challenge. No hints. So what do we do, right? So it says the following. It's a login page, all right? We have not submitted anything. And it says, can you log in as Larry? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and enter L-A-R-R-Y. And I'm going to enter, say, for example, password as Larry. And see what we get in a normal use case. So a normal use case, meaning that as you're signing in, you're testing out the input forms and so on, you want to try to just enter, right? What would a normal user enter into the inputs okay so go ahead and click on login and once you click on login right it says please try to log in as larry not larry okay so with a capital l all right so immediately we can change that up i can change it to a capital l all right so it's case sensitive and when i click on login it says this is not the correct password for larry please try again all right so obviously right at the top here it already has some kind of check, all right, some kind of verification that you can only enter this particular username to enter into the site, okay? And of course, the password, you can enter any fields that you want, okay? So in my case, we can use a number of examples, all right? So we can try, for example, over here, we have a SQL injection that we could try to insert into the system. So for example, I can enter a semicolon or a single quote. So I can enter a single quote and I can enter password, for example. Okay, and when I hit login, all right, obviously at the bottom, you'll be able to see this is not the correct password for Larry. Please try again. So we can see this kind of details and data directly by trying it out. All right, so we can try a single quote as well. So for example, over here, I can enter a single quote and I can copy the information and I can go into the password field and I can paste it and I can click login. All right, so once I go in, once again, we're not able to get any response from the server. Okay, so what we can do next is that we can go and try to automate some of the SQL injection. So one of it is, of course, via SQL map, all right, which we have learned as part of the course. The other way is more of a manual approach, which is using Burp Suite. So again, we can hit back to preferences, go under network settings, and we can enable the manual proxy configuration. Click OK on that. And we have Burp Suite running right here. Okay. So all I got to do right now is I can actually turn on intercept. All right. So once I have the intercept turned on, I can go back 
to the site and I can go ahead and click for some key in some data and click on login. Okay. And of course under web suite, okay, I can drop this lesson overview, lesson manual. All this are information that's always central into the system. So in this case, we have a post, all right, which is we are trying to log into the web application system. And right at the bottom, we have username underscore login, and we have the password underscore login. All right, so I can do a right click and send to repeater. Send to repeater. You can use the control R as well as a shortcut. So once we go to repeater, okay, we have, all right, for example, over here, we have the following information, all right. So here we have the following, okay, so we have username and we have password okay so all you got to do is try a password so i can try for example larry that we have tried earlier and we recognize that we were not able to get a response so it says over here right the feedback this is not the correct password for larry please try again okay so what about if we try a single quote all right so we have a list of all those payloads that we can inject into the web application system or as part of SQL injection, as part of learning SQL injection. So again, this is a more manual approach in learning about how we can do manual payloads into web application systems. So I can go ahead and click on send. And right here, we will get the error message. So sometimes a lot of these error messages, they do not get shown in the web application system M because they're trying to mask some of these error messages configuration feedback that could accidentally expose a lot of data. So back here, back to Burp Suite, we are picking up all those different responses. So over here, we can see the following, right? Message, request processing fail, nested exception, all right, statement. Okay, as you can see over here, all right, we have number of single quote in statement, select password from challenge underscore users where user ID is Larry, all right, and password, we have three single quotes right here. Okay, so what we can do right now is we can put, for example, okay, we can put or one equal one. Okay, and we can go ahead and click send. All right, it says internal server error, and then we have request processing fail, nested exception, so we can read the syntax error exception. So it's showing us literally what we're entering wrongly. Okay, so in this case, we can see and password, all right, it's a semi, uh, we have a double single quote here, or one equal one. So what we can do instead is we can actually go ahead and enter a single quote, all right, for one, and then a single quote again right before the last one, and go ahead and click send. All right, and it says, congratulations, you solved the challenge, here is your flag. And you can copy and paste the flag into the web application system to track your scoring. Okay, so once again, I hope you have learned something valuable. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.